Howdy, and welcome back to Hosedia.com. And today we're going to be looking at the techniques I use to finish processing this image here of Mesa Arch. Mesa Arch is a, kind of an iconic location outside of Moab, Utah. And if you're not familiar with Moab or if you want to find out more information about photographing Moab, I have a free travel guide out there. You can just visit the link below there, Hasidia.com slash travel. And uh, there's a link to the Photographer's Guide to Moab, Utah, and that'll have more information about Mesa Arch and other locations around the Moab area to photograph. So uh, in this image, um, like I said, we're going to look at the techniques I use to process it. You can find uh, other uh, videos of mine as well as uh, some other online training resources I recommend at the link there, hasidia.com slash howto. And uh, there's recommended ebooks and some of the videos that I really enjoy, including uh, one that will be featured in this video. It's a technique I learned from Scott Kelby at kelbytraining.com. Great guy, awesome resource. You can find, I believe, a discount code right now for that if you just hit the uh, link I just mentioned. And um, you can find all sorts of things like that. So, anyways, let's get into this uh, image. So, here we are in my Lightroom library. Uh, the image right here is the actual uh, image I created uh, through a um, HD, it's actually an HDR image I created using Photomatix. And I don't want to go into all that right now, uh, just in the, the uh, sake of efficiency. So basically, I used Photomatix to you kind of composite those images, HDR, create an HDR image, tone mapped them into this image. But what I wanted to highlight in this video is some of the techniques I used to stylize it after I had created the HDR image. So if you look at this image, after the tone mapping process, I kind of had a problem here um, around the sun. I think it didn't look quite right. And it's also, I mean, it looks good, but it's a little flat. And I try to uh, do that in my tone mapping process. I don't do much of my uh, stylization and so forth within Photomatix. I do that later and that's what I wanted to emphasize in this video. So we'll get into that. So to solve the kind of uh, wonkiness there around the sun, I'm actually going to open up that image as well as hmm, maybe this image into Photoshop as Photoshop layers and then take elements from the underexposed image, blend them into the HDR image to solve that problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit photo, edit in, and open as layers in Photoshop. Great. Here we have our two images in Photoshop loaded as layers. As you can see, we have the underexposed image, the one where I thought the sun was okay, and then the HDR image where, as you can see, there's some problems around there. So I could create a mask and then go in with a brush and kind of create a, maybe a selection and work away and paint away some of this um, top layer to reveal the bottom layer. But what I'm going to do is just quickly change the blending mode of this top layer to screen and you're going to see that problem go away rather quickly. So now that I've got that I'm going to go ahead and um, I could flatten the image right now or create a duplicate layer uh, for right now just to keep things simple. I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image. Then the next step I'm going to do is try to clean it up, reduce some noise, deal with, I believe I have a couple dust spots on there as you can see. My sensor is getting rather dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and create a duplicate layer. Call that layer mod for modifications. And then just grab my um, healing brush, but before that I do that I'm actually going to run Nix Define 2.0, which is a great noise reduction utility against the entire image. It detects automatically where there's noise, measures it, and then proposes an algorithm by which to rid it. So as you can see, as we go from the before and after, if you look down here, much of the noise was in this Sun, uh, sunrise area and you can see it's gone with their suggested algorithm so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and process that. Alright, so we got rid of the dust spots. A couple other things I want to address is oh, we could leave this sun flare. 
I'm not uh, a big proponent of removing it, but since it's kind of easy, I'll get rid of it there. Mm. That looked a little weird. Try a different run at it with the... Cool, that looks good. And then the last p bit I wanted to address was this framing problem of mine. So to correct that, I'm going to grab a clone tool, select the area I want to clone, Looks a little weird, so I'm going to go ahead and resample maybe an area below here. And fix that problem with the clone stamp. So now that we have uh, the image like we want it, the technique I wanted to try out was one that Scott Kelby mentioned um, for portraits. And so, like I said, definitely check out uh, kelbytraining.com. There's all sorts of cool things you can use. And, and you don't have to use his techniques or the techniques you find in uh, a certain context. Uh, the technique I'm going to try here is actually a portrait technique that he um, suggests. But I'm going to try it uh, to see if I can't bring out any more uh, life and um excuse me, character in these rocks. So the first thing I'm going to do is, just for speed's sake, I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image so we're dealing with less layers. But you don't normally have to do that. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that layer real quick, change its blending mode to vivid light, then invert it. Go ahead and do a surface blur on it. Of 40 and 40 for radius and threshold. Hit OK. And this takes probably 20 minutes or so. So we'll see you back in just a second. All right. So the surface blur is done, took, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes or so. And so now, doesn't look great, but we're going to go ahead and take our two layers over here, create a merged layer, command option shift E. So there we go, with our merged layer, so we can get rid of the surface blur layer now. And then in this merged layer, we're going to go ahead and desaturate it to get rid of this weird weirdness going on. Oops, excuse me, image adjustments, there we go, desaturate. And change its blending mode to overlay. Ah. So then it's looking a little, I'd say it's probably a little too crisp for me. And again, I'm going to create a layer mask to fix some of these problems because I don't really want this character applied to the entire image, just some of the uh, the areas uh, here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to image, adjustments, shadows and highlights. We're going to go ahead and drop the shadows down, highlights. And then if we adjust our mid-tone contrast. So as I move the mid-tone contrast up, you're going to see some what I call character in these rocks appear. So you can go super crazy, not so crazy. Let's say maybe I don't know, 20 or so, negative 20, somewhere on there. Still got some cleaning up to do here. So we'll go ahead and hit, let's see, here we go, zero, yeah, we'll go around 25 maybe. There we go, hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit layer, create a layer mask and hide all of that. So there we go, without it, and then I'm going to paint in using white here, grab a white brush. I'm going to go ahead and paint in some of these areas where I want that character 
our texture effect to appear. So I've got my brush set at about 30%, 33%. Paint that in. And while I paint that in, if you're interested how I got that starburst effect, I used an old Nikon 20 millimeter AFD, but I stopped it down to like F22. And so that stop down diaphragm there created that starburst effect. And that's how you can create those with wide angle lenses. Um, I guess any lens that you can stop down far enough that. Um, and still get enough light. So I was using a tripod ob obviously, but that's how starburst effects like that are created. So as you see my layer mask over here, I'm kind of seeing where I'm painting in that effect. And I don't know if I want to go 100% with it. Get a little bit underneath the, the arch. What's really cool about this arch and, and, and at sunrise is you only have about five minutes to photograph it. It's very crowded there too, so expect a lot of uh, fellow photographers. But yeah, so it starts to glow red underneath there just for, oh, five or ten minutes. It's very magical, and then it's gone. So at that point, you run way down to the Grand Overlook or Dead Horse Point, and you can photograph uh, the Canyonlands under a really beautiful dimensional light. So there we go. So you can see it without the effect and with the effect. Brought out some character there. Cool. So sometimes uh, if I'm going to test out an effect, I want to bring out some saturation in this, uh, this image. Uh, it's a little more contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and go to new layer, an empty layer, call it merge. I'm going to go ahead and hit layer and the alt key and merge the visible. So I've got this new merged layer I'm working with now. So I can, you know, do a couple different adjustments, um, general contrast adjustment. Maybe just a hair there. So I'll do my contrast adjustments before I do any vibrancy or saturation adjustments. There we go. Uh, so then I'm going to go ahead and do a, let's see, you could try doing a red channel saturation increase. Eh, not so much. We might just go with a vibrancy boost. So we'll go ahead and delete that, and we'll grab a um, vibrancy layer there. Kind of pump up the vibrancy a little bit. There we go. See what that's like. Subtle, but it works. It's getting some nice uh, catch lights and stuff like that underneath the arch. And we're going to go ahead and. Uh, do a final sharpening effect. So we can go to layer, new layer, same thing. I'm going to do a merge, but I'll call this sharp. And then layer, alt tab, alt key, merge visible. And we've created a, a layer that we can sharpen. So we can go to different. Uh, so here we could maybe do a high pass um, sharpening, which is and again, continue to accentuate some of this uh, character within the rocks, and we'll just selectively apply it. So we'll go ahead and fit, hit filter, other, high pass. There we go. We got a little bit of it. Maybe give it maybe 2.5, whatever, 2, 2.5, whatever it takes. Go ahead and do that. Change its blending mode then to overlay. There we go. And if you get in here, you can see, whoa, got in there a little too close. You can see the effect of the high pass sharpening there. There we go. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, this is Mesa Arch. You can find out more information about photographing Moab in my free travel guide. So hit that, hasidia.com slash travel. And then um, if you want to see other videos like this, just go ahead and hit the link below, hasidia.com slash how to. And you'll find a... Uh, all the videos that I've posted as well as a bunch of additional resources and I do want to emphasize the additional resources because um, that um, portrait technique of Scott Kelby's worked well for this landscape image and uh, you can learn all sorts of like, stuff like that from Kelby training and there's a link um, to the Kelby training site 
uh, as well as uh, images like our videos like this. So hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you out there on the creative frontier.